trigonometry, you'll notice that we spend a lot of time with some special angles. Zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. Today we're going to talk about two special triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, and how those can be useful in helping us find trig ratios. You probably encountered this in geometry or perhaps even in algebra. If I have a 90 degree angle and the two other angles are 45 degrees, what kind of triangle is this? Sure, it's an isosceles triangle. In other words, if those angles are equal, their opposite sides have to be equal. Hey, let's call each of those sides x just for fun. Would I be able to find an expression for the hypotenuse in terms of x? Pause the video and see if you can do it. I hope you did the Pythagorean theorem. Sure. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Since A and B are the same, I combined them. I took the square root of both sides. Of course, technically, I should have a plus or minus in front of here, but since I'm dealing with length, does it make sense to have negative length? And uh, let's see, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. So we just discovered that the hypotenuse would be x times the square root of 2. And this is always going to be the case in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So for example, if I put some actual values in there for x, I don't know, let's say my each leg is 7, then I know the hypotenuse is going to be 7 times the square root of 2. Okay, uh, let's say each leg is 1. Then my hypotenuse is going to be 1 times the square root of 2. Let's look at another example. Knowing this, what if I told you that my hypotenuse was 2? Ooh. What would the legs be? Pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Did you get the square root of 2? Yeah, sure. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 would give you 2. Everybody see that? If I called this the square root of 2, and I called this the square root of 2, this would be the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and that's 2. Yeah. What if I had a smaller 45, 45 triangle, and I wanted to call that hypotenuse 1? What would those two legs be? Pause the video. Yeah, it would be the square root of 2 over 2. Yeah. So, the 45, 45, 90 triangle can be any size, any size, but the relationship between the sides will always be the same. Pretty cool. Alrighty? So that's your 45, 45, 90 triangle. Let's look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle next. All right, so let's start by looking at an equilateral triangle where all the angles and all the sides are equal. So let's say that all my sides have a length of x. All right, I'm going to drop an altitude down, boink, 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 and if you remember, when you do that in equilateral triangle, that breaks your angle into two equal pieces. So each of those angles will be now 30 degrees. And that also bisects the bottom, so I know that this side is going to be 1 half x. Oh, look, I just created a 30, 60, 90 triangle, just like that. Let's just erase this other half since I don't need that anymore. So I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I know my hypotenuse is x. I know that the side opposite the 30 degree is 1 half x. How could I find this side right here? Let's call that side A. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right. Here we are, Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If you just do the math here, I'm isolating A squared. I took the square root of both sides. Again, I'm just looking for the positive square root at this point. 
square root of 3 over 2x. So now I have a relationship that works for any and every 30, 60, 90 triangle. I know that the smallest side, in other words, the side opposite the smallest angle, will always be half of the hypotenuse. I know that the next biggest side, the side opposite the next biggest angle, will be the small side times the square root of 3. Or you can think of it as the hypotenuse times the square root of 3 over 2. Isn't that cool? Let's look at some examples then. So let's say I call the hypotenuse 2. Well, then the side opposite the 30 degrees is going to be half of that. The side opposite 60 degrees will be the short leg times the square root of 3. Hmm. Let's say my hypotenuse is 20. Well, then the shortest side is going to be half of that. And the side opposite the 60 degree is going to be the short side times the square root of 3. What if my hypotenuse is 1? Well, then the shortest side is going to be half of that. The side opposite the 60 is going to be the short side times the square root of 3. Very nice. How does this help us in trick? Let's see. Let's say we're asked to evaluate the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, remember, a cosine of an angle is asking for the ratio of sides of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So if we are on our xy coordinate plane, and we always, of course, start here on the x-axis, and if we've rotated 30 degrees, there's my 30 degrees, I'm going to draw up on down and make a little reference triangle. And now, do I know the length of my hypotenuse? No. But I don't care what that hypotenuse is, because I know that in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratio of sides is set. So I don't know. Let's call that hypotenuse 2. If we call the hypotenuse 2, that makes my math easy. The shortest side, in other words, the side opposite the 30 degree, is going to be half of the hypotenuse. The side opposite the 60 degree will be the short side times the square root of 3. And now I have my picture. I can evaluate the cosine of 30. It's going to be the adjacent side, which of course is always the x when you are in the coordinate plane, over my hypotenuse or my rotating arm. So my cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. But wait, what if you weren't in the mood to call that 2? What if instead you wanted to call the hypotenuse 5? That's okay. It makes your math a little more difficult, but that's okay. Opposite the 30 degree would be half of that. Opposite the 60 degree would be the short side times the square root of 3. Oh my gosh, this looks totally different. Well, let's see, the cosine is your x divided by your rotating arm or your adjacent divided by your hypotenuse. Oh my gosh! It ends up being the same thing. Now, what if we instead called that one? Lots of times in trig, we talk about the unit circle. In other words, my rotating arm has a length of one. Is that going to work too? Of course it is. Opposite the 30 will be one half. Opposite the 60 will be square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is my adjacent over the hypotenuse, or my x over my rotating arm. That's square root of 3 over 2 over 1, which is, of course, square root of 3 over 2. The thing that's cool about trig ratios is that they are ratios. So it doesn't matter how big or small your triangle is. Your ratio will remain the same. Oh. Let's try a few more of these. Let's try another example. How about if I evaluate the cosine of 135 degrees? Ooh. Okay, 135 degrees. I'm rotating, there's 90 degrees, and there's 135. So I'm shy of 180 degrees. That puts me in the second quadrant. Of course, you always start rotating from the X. Roop. I always drop down or up to make my reference triangle. How shy am I? 
from 180 degrees? Well, 180 minus 135 is 45. 45 degrees is my reference angle. Hey, I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. To figure out my cosine, of course, I need the sides of the triangle. Well, we can call the sides whatever we want. I like calling the hypotenuse too. It just makes things easy. Now think back, when our hypotenuse is two, in order to keep the relationship, each leg has to be the square root of two, right? A leg times the square root of two is the hypotenuse, so that works. Now there's something missing in my picture, and you're right. That would have to be a negative there because I'm going to the left on my x-axis. So now what's the cosine of 135 degrees? Well, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, or the x value over my rotating arm. So negative square root of 2 over 2. Make sense? Okay, since we're here, let's do the others. What would the sine of 135 degrees be? Group, I'm going to use my same reference triangle. The sine is my opposite over my hypotenuse, or the y value over the rotating arm. Hey, how about the tan of 135 degrees? Let's see, tan is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So that's going to be the square root of 2 over the negative square root of 2, and that's going to give me negative 1. Okay? And I think you'll find that if you use different values, you'll get the same answers. For those of you who really like the unit circle, what each side have to be to maintain the 45, 45, 90 relationship? Yeah, each side would be divided by 2. Do I get my same values for the cosine of 135? Sure, it's the x value over the rotating arm. The sine of 135? Sure, it's the y value over the rotating arm. The tan of 135? Sure, it's the y over the x opposite over adjacent. Let's do one more example. Let's find the sine of 300 degrees and the cosine and the tan of 300 degrees. Let's start with a picture. 300 degrees, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, zoop. So I'm in the fourth quadrant. So again, you've rotated all the way around, zoop, and you've ended up here. I'm going to make my reference triangle going up or down always to the x-axis. How many degrees are left over? Well, 360 minus 60, that's going to give me 60 degrees there. Okay, I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I can use the cool relationship we just discovered. I can call the hypotenuse whatever I want. Any positive value is fine. I like 2. If my hypotenuse is 2, then the smallest side, which is the side opposite the smallest angle, which is the 30 degrees, is going to be half of that. And the side opposite the 60 will be the square root of 3. Now, before I go on, since I'm in the coordinate plane, I have to think about my x and y values, if they should be positive or negative. So, my x is going to the right, so that's a positive one. My y value, though, is going down, so that's a negative square root of 3. By definition, the rotating arm is always positive. It's just length. Okay, now I have my picture. I'm all ready to go. The sine of 300 is my opposite over hypotenuse, which, when I'm in the coordinate plane, will always be the y value over the rotating arm. So that's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 300 degrees, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, which will always, in the coordinate plane, be the x value over the rotating arm. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, which in the coordinate plane is your y over your x, negative square root of 3 over 1, so that's just negative square root of 3. 
hey, for those of you who say, but wait, I like the unit circle. No problem. If you wanted to, you could have called this one, which would have made this one half and would have made this negative root 3 over 2. The relationship between the sides is still the same. And therefore, all your trig ratios are still the same. Right? What if you wanted to call this 5? Okay, that's fine. That would make this side 5 halves. That would make this side negative 5 times the square root of 3 over 2. And if you did your division, right, your sign would still be the y over the rotating arm. And you'd end up, after you simplified that fraction, with the same thing. So it matters not what you call your rotating arm, what length you use. As long as you use the correct relationship for either your 30, 60, 90 triangle or your 45, 45, 90 triangle, your ratios will always be the same. Okay? Again, I find it handy to use two as my rotating arm, both for the 30, 60, 90 and for the 45, 45, 90 triangle. It just is easiest for me. Okay? But if you prefer the unit circle, that's fine. If you prefer some other number, that's fine as well. That's what's so cool about ratios. I hope this was helpful. Someone has taken my place when time